All right, so I was just gonna show you guys the freeze damage on uh, my eye dry. I'm actually, I'm not happy that other people also had freeze damage, but I'm happy that I wasn't the only one at least, just because I felt like a total putz. Now I've already taken out, there's an adapter in here. All of you guys that own the iDry, you've seen it. There's this little brass adapter that goes over to a compression fitting. And what several of us had happen was it froze right in here and it actually pushed the plastic compression fitting out. This is where the little black line comes off and feeds water down to the face of your pump. It's good that it pushed out because otherwise it would have cracked the brass fitting or it could have cracked this T below. So it's actually good. It was a good freeze prevention technique, whether that was by design or not. Oh, well, but it was good. Um, it prevented possibly bigger problems. But what I was trying to explain to a couple of other guys was what I think is the issue, at least on this. You've got this vertical stack of valves. OK, so when as I understand it, someone with eye dry may tell me I'm wrong, so I'm not trying to give you guys false information. When the pump shuts off, I think this has got to be the valve because it's a looks like a oh, a diaphragm sort of valve. When the pump shuts off, if the water does not also turn off, your water would just flow through the pump and come out your exhaust. So the water also has to shut off. When the pump turns on, the water turns on. Well, most of us go to shut our kilns down and winterize them. We walk out, shut the pump off. And in my case, my main supply line here, it tees off and goes up to the kiln, but then I run over there and I've got a bypass and a drain. So I shut the water off up at the house and then I come open that bypass and I just let it drain out. The problem is this valve is closed and there's a water sitting all up in this pipe. Now you pull your plug out, you disconnect your little black hose here, fine. Um, and that's gonna drain water out of the black hose. You pull your drain plug off the bottom of the pump, that's gonna drain your pump, but it doesn't drain the water out of this stack right here. That water stays trapped and it's not a lot, but it's enough, obviously it's enough. So what I was telling uh, Wild Edge and what I commented on my Facebook post, I'm gonna upload this as a new post. Um, what I think we need to do when you shut your pump off, you shut your water off, you drain your main system. If yours is exposed like me, I know a lot of guys have their kiln set up inside, so this doesn't matter, but I drain out this main line so it's voided. Then turn your pump back on for just a second because when you do, it's gonna call for water and it's gonna open this valve and that little bit of water stacked in here is gonna fall. It's gonna fall back into your supply down there. And just do it for just a second. You don't got to sit there and run your pump dry for a couple minutes. No. Turn it on. Let it start to spin up. And it's going to call for water. It's going to open that valve. You could probably actually put your hand on there. And actually, now that I say that, there may be... Some of these have a way that you can, um, you can manually turn them on. I don't know if there's a setting on the kiln that you can tell it, hey, turn the water on for a second. But anyway, do something to open that valve and let that water fall back. That way it's not sitting there on top. Um, you could, if you have a way to blow it out with air, you could just disconnect. You could thread that fitting out right here um, and just jet air in there and blow it out. But like I said, it's, you know, I, I feel like just from seeing all the comments, I've had multiple people, that, you know, that are all like, oh, same thing happened to me, same thing happened to me. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, but in a way, there's a silver lining that we didn't have worse damage than that. Um, anyway, just something to think about. It's, it's what I'll do for sure. <laughs> for sure. And I've done it in the past when I winterized my pump, I just forgot to do it this time. Um, because I thought about that the last time last winter, uh, we had a little freeze and I was like, Oh yeah, crap. I need to make sure that that thing is completely, completely drained. And I had pulled my drain plug. Honestly, this time <laughs> guys, this time I'm that guy. I shut everything down. I forgot to pull my drain plug. 
I came out that next morning. I woke up Friday morning, and that was the first thing that hit me in the head. I mean, just like, you know, you wake up, what's going on? Who knows? I don't know where I'm at. Oh, crap, I didn't pull the drain plug. So I ran out here, pulled it out, got a blowtorch, and was heating the pump up, uh, and got it to where it was running water out on the ground just to try to, you know, I was like, maybe that way, because it, it was going to freeze even harder and harder and harder. And I was like, maybe I can catch it before it really freezes solid and cracks that cast iron. And I think I, I think I got lucky there. Anyway, yeah, normal winterization procedure for me. I shut the water off at the main. I open my bypass to drain this whole line out. I take out my drain plug. If you take out the drain plug, you really don't have to disconnect the black line there because it's going to just gravity feed down. But then the last thing, turn your pump back on to make that valve open and let that little bit of water fall out. And you should be good to go there. But anyway, I have found uh, Justin Siegford, I think. Thank you. He sent me these parts uh, to order online as far as what the actual original fittings are. I'm going to try. This is a half inch MPT here. Uh, I took that brass adapter out. And this seems like it's smaller. It wasn't a half inch. Maybe it's a three eighths or maybe it's metric. I'm not sure. I'm gonna take this adapter to town and see if I can just cross it over to a, a hose barb like how that one is. And then I'm just gonna run a piece of flexible tubing for now at least to get me up and running. And then I'll see about order, <coughs> ordering the original parts because I do want to keep it original as much as possible. Probably order the originals to replace it and order a set of spares also. Anyway, hopefully the rest of you guys get your stuff fixed up quickly and back up and running. Well, the pump may be loud, but I just wanted to show you guys. Uh, I got everything fired back up. Thank God, no damage. Uh, I think I mentioned I forgot to actually drain my pump, which I drained all the water out of everything else. So the pump really sh may have been full, but it had room to get up into the pipe, whatever. Uh, so the pump did not get drained, but I had my this little factory plug popped out and I got this fitting, it's a shark bite fitting, half inch MPT to 3 8 uh, push fit, this is a 3 8 OD pipe, and then on the pump there is a 3 8 uh, MPT by 3 8 uh, compression or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, that was, uh, I don't know, the, the pipe I had to buy a 25 foot roll, so it was like 10 or 12 dollars, but each of the fittings I think were about five. So, all in all, not horrible, and I was able to go get it same day. I uh, didn't have to order it online or anything. And like I said, I'm actually, you know, the old fittings, they were brass. These old fittings were brass, and the plastic was pressed into it. And they go, okay, well, brass is heavier duty, but again, in this case, I'm actually happy it was plastic because when it froze, it busted the plastic before it busted anything metal. So. I'm actually better with that. I like that better. So anyway, I guess I could put a I could put a little elbow on there and make it more of a direct run, like how the black factory pipe was. But I just coiled it around and it's just fine. Alright, we are back on, back up and running.